In the shadow of your wings, I will abide forever, and hear my spirit sings. I will rejoice in you, my God. Welcome to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. The Granby Christian Church desires the lost to be saved and the believer to passionately pursue Christ in all that they do. Let's join Pastor John Marins for today's message. Friends, as we face a world that is becoming more and more unstable and gripped by war and the rumors of war, where can we find a place of stability and hope? from which to live. Friends, uh, that place is found only in God. And James chapter 1 will teach us this. Shall we pray? Father, in Psalms 42, David, speaking to himself, says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. How could the Holy Spirit have made it clearer? For he through David teaches that there is a place of hope and quiet rest, and that place is in you, Jehovah. Yes, the rest and freedom from worry we long for is found in you, Father, and in you alone. And it's found in part through your great promises especially the promise of perfecting us through trials and granting us eternal life through the blood of your Son. Father, our passage for today, James 1, lays out countless reasons why we can have genuine hope in this truth. So just now, quiet the voices of accusation and despair, and then let us hear your sweet voice of reason, affirmation, and truth. This will cause us to have great hope in 2024. For in the name of God and His Son, Father, the promises are kept. Thank you. Amen. Friends, before we consider our topic of hope for 2024, may I share with you some of the exciting things that happened during the mission trip that Jane, my wife, and I made to Romania and Albania? These will also bring hope to your heart. On January 1st, after spending five days with our son Nathan Marins and his family, we took a flight, a night flight from Washington, D.C. to Romania. Having been given adequate time for rest and slow adjustment, our bodies having to adjust to an eight-hour loss of time and all the jet lag, we began a series of meetings in the Baptist Church in Madarat, Romania, We have ministered in that area of the world during mission trips since 2008. It was splendid to see old friends that have remained true to God and new people who have been added to the church. Our sponsoring organization, which is Jacob's House International, has been instrumental in Romania in helping with revival meetings, many weeks of Christian service camp, tuition to help students attend a Christian high school in the area, money to help others go to college. They have funded relief for the poor in the area and helped even in an operation to fix the severely crossed eyes of a beautiful young girl. The joy that this has given to her is without measure. They've supplied funds to remodel church houses, and the church building in Madarat now is beautiful, having new restrooms, a new fellowship area, and the building has also been painted. It looks wonderful. In Romania, we had six days of revival services in which we spoke seven times. Hearts were moved, tears were shed, I I shed tears, and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ was preached. On the 12th of January, we flew to Albania to visit the mission work of Sean and Laura Carney, our niece and her husband. They, along with their children, Alistair and Amelia, have been doing work in Albasan, Albania, for the past six years. A radiant joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, was present in all the services we attended. Sean is co-pastoring a church and teaching in that church 
in an after school program. Young and old alike come and sign up for classes because of their desire to learn English. Many contacts are being made and many doors are being opened to the Word of God because of these much needed English classes. It was interesting that Phil and Jody Marins were there as well when we visited. They plan to help with this new work, giving several months per year in service to God in Elbasan. Jane and I want to thank you for helping us with the trip. Lives are being changed, and your prayers and your financial support of our ministry are so appreciated. Now our topic, Great Hope for 2024. Let's turn on our copy of the Scriptures to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. May God, by His Holy Spirit, teach us concerning hope. First, this truth. Again, from James chapter 1. We're going to have great hope in 2024 because of the great ingathering of the children of Israel. The children of Israel are coming back to the Holy Land. Look at verse 1. James 1. 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that the epistle is addressed to a specific group. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Note our text doesn't say to the 12 tribes of Jacob that have been lost, because they haven't been lost, rather they have been scattered. Because of their idolatry, the children of Israel, and that's another name for Jacob, were scattered, especially in 70 AD when the temple of Herod was destroyed. But in the following years, because of their continuing rebellion against Rome, the Jews were further scattered and forbidden to go to the Holy Land. But friends, Doesn't it bring you great hope that after 2,000 years, when even tough wars and rumors of wars raged over the Holy Land and followed the children of Abraham wherever they went all over the world, that the Jews are returning to the land promised to Abraham? As of January 1st, 2024, Israel's Israel's population stood at 9,842,000. This is a tenfold increase compared to Israel on the day when it was founded in 1948. Of the 15.2 million Jewish people in the world, 47% of these now reside in Israel, and predictions are calling for 80% in the next 25 to 30 years. This is indeed a fulfillment of prophecy. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 and 11. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him. That's Jesus. And his resting place shall be glorious. That's the Holy Land. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who were left. God is fulfilling his promise to the Jews in our day. What hope, then, all of this brings to our hearts, considering the other promises that God has made? Now let's read verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But patience or steadfastness have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. May our hearts never again be thrown in despair. May we never again lack hope when we face difficulties and trials. Trials are to be expected. And as Andre Crouch sang, through it all, speaking of the trials of life, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God because these come only to make us strong. Hope jumps from the pages of James when we discover the biggest problems in our lives are used by God to refine and to perfect our faith. That's genuine hope for 2024. Reading on in verses 5 through 8, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Friends, here we are promised wisdom. Can anything cause more despair than not knowing what to do when we face very challenging alternatives? God, according to these verses, is here 
to give us divine wisdom if in faith, without doubt, and we simply ask, Lord, what should we do? Wisdom is promise to the young single parent who's struggling with bills and calendars and the pressures of job. God will show that person, whoever he or she is, that if they but ask, they will receive wisdom and help from God. This brings abiding hope. Now verses 9 through 11. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation because as a flower of the grass he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with the burning heat that it withers the grass, its flower falls, its beauty perishes. So the rich man will also fade, fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Now, Death is not to be feared, brothers and sisters. It's not the end. It's the doorway to God's eternal home. Ralph, my older brother that I love very much, was teaching some young people and asked an open, an open-ended question. He said, uh, "What do you have to do to go to heaven?" One thoughtful boy responded, "You got to die." <laughs> There's more truth in that statement than meets the eye. But doesn't that settle for us this matter of dying? Death is the means that God uses to bring us to himself for all who come to Jesus for salvation in genuine living faith will be saved. Death will not hold on to these. This is real hope, friends. And friends, the scripture promises that we're soon to get a crown of life. It'll be given to each of us if we endure temptations. Look at verse 12. Blessed is he who endures temptation, for when he has been approved or stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who what love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Isn't that a source of hope? God doesn't tempt us. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. Now here's some wondrous truth that, again, is going to inspire hope within our hearts. Don't be deceived. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And if we need something, we need to look upward in prayer. Of his own will, God brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. God will make all things right in the end, brothers and sisters. And we see that in the next few verses. So then, my beloved brethren, let everyone be quick to hear. Slow to speak and slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and the overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye what? Doers of the word, and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the, a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what he was like. But he who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue but deceives his heart. This man's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit widows and orphans in their affliction and to keep yourself unstained from the world. Father, this day, hope wells up within us as we consider the wondrous truths that we've read from James chapter 1. These truths are immutable. Calm us on windy days when trials assail us without relief. Show us the end of all things and how our trials are made on purpose to make us strong. They're given to us on purpose. Show us the source of true wisdom, God. It's you. And show us that you are ever giving to us perfect gifts when we reach out to you in faith. Not seeking things that are against your will, but seeking the things that you want to bless us with. By all of these, Father, invigorate with true hope our lives. God, we can't do this thing called Christianity by ourselves, and we don't want to try to do it anymore all by ourselves. We want to live 
in a state of hope by looking to you and you alone for the perfection we seek and for the eternal life we desire. Again, by all of these, invigorate hope within us in the holy name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Live in hope, friends, and read again the book of James, chapter 1. Thank you for listening to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. If you don't have a church home, they would like to invite you to join them this Sunday for morning worship at 1045. The church is located at 969 Granby Miners Road in Granby, Missouri. Have a blessed weekend and remember to abide in the shadow of his wings. I will rejoice in you, my God, in the shadow your wings Are you a Christian who likes to read? If not, there's a whole world of Christian publishing out there that you're missing out on. I invite you to check out the Author's Corner podcast where I talk to the latest Christian authors each week about their new book releases and what's coming next. So if you're ready to jumpstart your spiritual growth with the newest books and the authors who write them, check out the Author's Corner podcast with me, Roberta Foster.